Thank you for joining my talk on the Cam Cambodia Warframe Student Stars, Mathematica, Arduino, and Raspberry Pi. My name is Linus Anaka, and I am the Technical Director for CWSS. I manage technical issues for our CWSS Moodle's website, the Raspberry Pi's Arduino and Lab Probes. I am also the President of Lanaka Publication and the Lanaka STEM Lending Library. Only 10 months ago, Warframe Research offered Cambodian students in grade 4 and 12 access to Warframe 1. As part of the effort of His Excellency Professor Chan Wahad, manager of the New Generation Pedagogical Research Center at the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport in Cambodia to support and recognize students and their mentoring educators. Ketron Prama organized the Cambodia Warframe Student Stars. We provide a student STEM course in Moodle and also on Raspberry Pi. Activities are based on grade level. We provide support in Moodle for the mentor, mentor educators so that they can create and share Warframe content in Kamai. We also provide national weekly workshops for students and mentors in Zoom. We provide in-person STEM workshops across Cambodia using Mathematica and Raspberry Pi and Sensor to acquire reward data. We also provide national award and speaking opportunities. This timeline shows the commitment since 2016 of Warframe Research and the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport for 21st century computational thinking. It also highlights the implementation effort. In 2018, I sponsored a conference on the subject of technology in education at Kids City Science Museum. It was hosted by the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport for 500 ed, ed, math and science teachers from all over 25 provinces. The program demonstrated in Kamai and usefulness in education of Mathematica on Raspberry Pi. These attendees, however, have limited access to computers and lab equipment. To move forward, I created the STEM Lending Library to loan equipment to schools. In, to, in 2019, His Excellency Professor Chan Rawat led in Kamal the STEM Excellence Pathway Program from the Carnage Science Center, supported by Catherine Prama, who is an authorized provider of the program. Afterwards, in 2019, she supported His Excellency Professor Chan Rawat in creating the Memorandum of Understanding between Warframe Research and the Ministry for Software Licenses for 500 Educators. She also part partially funded the month long Warframe Training Program in Phnom Penh. In 2020, Stephen Warframe spoke at the Cambodian International Conference on Mentoring Educators to 1,000 attendees. And one year later, in 2021, he provided access to Warframe 1 to 3,000 students in grade 4 and grade 12, and to their mentoring educators. With lessons learned from the 2019 Warframe program in Cambodia, Ketron Prama organized the Cambodia Warframe Student Stars to implement a broad range of supporting activities. The CWSS Module Learning Management course was created to share, educate, train, and, and support participants across Cambodia in Kamai using Zoom. Each week for two to three hours, a regularly scheduled Zoom section, participants can share 
their project and interest and walk through the resources at the wolfram.org website. Afterward, the section recording and activities are linked in the CWSS Moodle site. Another important opportunity was provided by His Excellency Professor Chan Rohat. He organized a group of of group PhD candidates to meet weekly in Zoom on using Wolfram in education. Also, he set up a Telegram group which currently has 300 participants after 10 months. He organized speaking opportunities at the national conferences to recognize and provide a forum to share. Finally, the Wolfram Summer Schools accepted the program. A 12th grade Cambodian turned software where she was mentored by Stephen Wolfram, who were Fogger, Simeon Bottery, and Megan Davis. We will now look at the implementation of the items, items in the timeline. This slide shows the URL and on page of the CWSS module course, which was created 10 months ago, which has been updated continuously. You can access the site and we request that you please share comment and content to support students in Cambodia. This slide illustrates the web page for the Wolfram resource tools in addition to those listed are the Wolfram One Cloud Quick Link site. Each year come with Wolfram Computer Basemart.org site. Participants are, are directed to the computational thinking room video and to, to the required outcome for computational thinking. In addition, Link direct, direct participants to the Fuse Mathematical Resources at the Victoria Australia State Government Education and Training Site. This slide illustrates the great specific content that can be found on the CWSS module site. The content is available from grade 4 through grade 10 to 12. The image also illustrates the grade 10 to 12 club resources. The registered participants are listed by grade and school. First are listed the after school STEM club leaders. Next, you see the names of students and also their grade levels. For each grade level, the site shares content provided by the Cambodian mentors in Khmer and English. English and by Wolfram Fuse, the Wolfram demonstration project are shared based on Wolfram grouping of the USA Common Core standard. The Fuse Mathematical Notebook are grouped by the Victoria Australia State Government standard. Both Wolfram and Fuse share science, math, engineering, and STEM activities or curricula as mathematical notebook. CWSS support the use of mathematical at school without access to Wi-Fi. The mathematical notebook collection shared in modules online are downloaded and made available on the Raspberry Pi. Thus far, the main resource, resource of Raspberry Pi mathematical notebook are Wolfram Research Resources Fuse Victoria State Government Resources and in Kamai Curricula for Grade 11, 12 fixes and Grade 10 and Grade 7 and 9 Mathematics. Some Raspberry Pis are also configured with Internet in the Box software. And this year we have videos, simulation dedication, simulation document and more in Moodle's Calibre and other optional apps. 
This lies in the street the Cambodia Warframe Community Forum in Telegram, which has almost 300 members after 10 months. His Excellency Professor Chan Rat set up an open access Telegram group to quickly provide solutions to those interested in Warframe 1. This community forum provides support for beginners to the more advanced. This slide illustrates an example program from the CWSS Weekly Virtual Workshop from January 20, 2022. The goal of the weekly meetings is to provide content at different levels using breakout rooms and flip learning. We answer questions in, in a shared parking lot, document and in the Zoom chat. The weekly program design is set up in five sections. First, we share student and educators content. Second, participants can share their, their project. Third, we review the EIW head course with illustration provided in camera. These sections are recorded and posted on the CWSS Moodle site. Fourth, we provide links to requested reward topics from the Warframe Technology Conference site. Fifth, we share mathematical, mathematical notebooks for specific subjects. For example, in the workshop program from 30 January 2020, the guest speaker included His Excellency Professor Chan Rawat. Physics teacher Von Soteri, math teacher Fen Rise, moderator E.M. Piron, and CDWSS project director Ketwin Palmer, and me. The, con the contest for students was recommended by school director Rizme Shoot, grade 412 students review the Warframe demonstration project. They create a video in camera that describe one project and how they would like to edit the code. The hard dot challenge was, was to create a computational thinking essay on most of grades 11 to 12 chemistry in camera using Warframe demonstration project Warframe Alpha functions or the linked Warframe WTC presentation, a $50 prize, and the MOE certificate. Next Zoom breakout room are available for two different levels of EIWL in camera. In the main room, mentors can participate in a discussion in Kamal of the Warframe resources for chemistry. When the breakout rooms rejoin the main room, real-world video and examples are introduced for flip learning. Yes, here is the topic from WTC site, our social media video, art analysis, and machine learning. The topics and links from the previous weeks section are also summarized. The next slide share an excellent workshop led by Ankit Naik, Warframe Research. He demonstrated system modular and the process to control and collect data using Arduino owners that are attached to a computer desktop or Raspberry Pi version of Mathematica. All registered participants for the workshop received free Arduino kit with the equipment that was recommended by Ankit Naik for the workshop. The section was recorded and was shared at the CWSS Moodle site. The next several slides illustrate in person mini camps in Batambang or Phnom Penh. Here in Phnom Penh, participants explore the mathematical project. 
by Google Fogar that are available on the official Raspberry Pi website. After implementing the code as, as described, participants explored other directions that in, in, interested them and then share their project. This slides illustrate an in-person mini camp in Phnom Penh. Participants explore Vanya probes using the GoLink software from Bob. Lesser. This slide illustrates an in-person mini camp in Batambang. Participants use a project described by Ankit Naik, adapted from and Johnson. They also created RFID Arduino project. This slide also illustrates the winners of two national contests. Award went to the Battenberg After School STEM Club at Onsen High School, led by physics teacher Von Setorin. They were awarded Arduino kit with many sensors to create new designs. Awards of Arduino equipment also went to, this, to some participants of the Phnom Penh Multi School CWSS After School STEM Club. This slide illustrates the eight winners of the National Computational Thinking SC contest. They were awarded certificate from the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport at the third National Virtual Conference on Mathematics Education in the 21st century from the 21st to 23rd of March 2022 sponsored by the Cambodian Mathematical Society. This slide illustrates the Warframe summer, summer School project by Tom Schofield. We end the great opportunity of meeting with other students from around the world at the 2022 Warframe Vital Summer School with mentoring from Stephen Warframe over Fuga. Simeon Bottery and Megan Davis. We had completed a project titled Explore, Explore Trip, Color Mobile, Automator. She had the additional great honor of winning the Warframe Future Contributor badge. This slides illustrate the excitement and appreciation of Cambodians who have discovered the power of the Warframe 1 software. After only three months, these presentations were shared at the third national virtual conference on mathematics education in 21st century from the 21st to 23rd of March 2022, sponsored by the Cambodian Mathematical Society. Following Stephen Warframe's inspire, inspiring presentation on using Warframe in Cambodia, this conference provided three days of Warframe session. Many in Kamai that share project by grade 4 and 12 students and their mentor educators. Finally, I would like to thank the contributors shaping Warframe used in education in Cambodia. Stephen Wolfram for making possible Wolfram one access across Cambodia. And His Excellency Professor Chan, NGPROC, Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport, for organizing and mentoring students and educators across Cambodia to support students. Carol Cronin, Wolfram Research, for a vision in helping organize the youth of Wolfram, one in Cambodia, Uriel Fuga, Simeon Bottery, and Megan Davis for supporting Cambodia's first Wolfram Summer Camp. Participant, Tosio Fred, my organization, Lanaka STEM Lending Library, for the donation of all STEM equipment and testing of code using CWSS workshops and the development of the CWSS website and notebooks for workshops. Ketun Prama, CWSS project director in Cambodia 
advancing education director and visiting professor at NDPRC, Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport. Van Stetori, CWSS Cambodian Project Leader. If there's any questions, I'd be more than glad to help. You know, the thing in Cambodia, which is different than in America or in countries that aren't third world countries, is that most of the public schools don't have computers even in their offices. So you're dealing with a population that has smartphones because the data plan in Cambodia, like in China, is maybe eight or ten dollars a month. So they can get access to um, the web if they're in the cities and in the provinces it comes and goes, but uh, because they're not used to using computers and they're used to direct instruction, their physics book, you know, maybe a hundred pages, it's in black and white. It may have one figure every two or three pages and they have benches in their school and, and you know, maybe they'll have outside toilets and so on, that they really need a lot of scaffolding. You know, you can't just, we learned in 2019 that you can't just give them the license and assume that they're going to be able to manage. So we had to create a way to spiral instruction, to repeat instruction, to give them lots of opportunities to, uh, to win something, to share what they're learning, uh, to have a forum and telegram, which is their main means of communication. And uh, just any way that we could really uh, uh, find to increase engagement. And that's something you wouldn't have to do, you know, in, in other countries, in more developed countries, because they don't need that kind of support. But we found that's working in Cambodia. And uh, so, but uh, the one thing that we're a little bit restricted on is the development of curriculum. So I've been very fortunate during this conference to speak to quite a few people. And the way we're going to proceed um, with a embedded pilot, uh, piloted STEM program at the public school system is to use uh, the American Open Sciad curriculum, which has been tested uh, by hundreds of educators in America and uh, approved. And uh, we're gonna use that and then create for each of those units, a Wolfram computational thinking notebook. Mm -hmm. And I think that'll be a good way to have something which will allow us to collect data, which uh, will be meaningful not only in Cambodia, but also here. And uh, we're going to use the forms to, uh, to do an action research. So we're going to try and quant you know, find a way to automate and streamline as much as we can. And uh, one gentleman whom I spoke to yesterday suggested that we could even capture the history in the notebook. So instead of doing uh, question and answers, we could do formative assessment by doing a post-processing of the students' notebooks and just parsing for the field set, uh, include information about the responses. So that means we can uh, better quantify whether or not there's learning. But that's where we're at now. And uh, uh, I, I don't know. Yes, sir. There are two questions. First question is why Cambodia? And the second thing is if they're using a Raspberry Pi, is already Ofkin software is already available and the Raspberry Pi, so you don't have to provide any software to come with it. I, I heard, I thought. Oh, and, it does. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's true. Well, the issue is this the Raspberry Pi, so in Cambodia, it's really hot, uh, you know, 80 to 90, you know, it's great. It's all year, it's really hot. So the Raspberry Pi 4 runs a bit hot. It runs a bit hot. If you use a 3B, it, it does okay if you have the fan and the, the heat sinks. But the one that works really well is the 400. The 400 is a keyboard, but it has a huge plate at the bottom, so it's its own heat sink. Uh -huh. So even though you don't need the keyboard, it's great. But the Raspberry Pi, $470. Now, there's really good smartphone penetration in Cambodia, uh, but the, most of the villages don't have uh, stable Wi-Fi, and they make about $200 a month, so they can't afford the data plan. So uh, we're trying to, uh, we're, we're going through the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sports and through educators and they're, uh, they're bringing in their group of students, most of which have a smartphone. But as we go to the schools, we're gonna use the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi version of Mathematica, uh, 
we use internet in a box. Okay, the reason we use internet in a box is because most of the kids have a smartphone, but they don't have a data plan. They also don't have libraries. So if you have uh, Calibra or Moodle on the internet in a box, you can then have them transfer all the PDF files onto their phone, even though they don't have a SIM card. So they don't need the SIM card. And then you, you provide, and one thing that I'm doing with another group um, is um, we're getting the little pie zeros and loading them up with content in Khmer and giving them to the village chief so they have a little digital library because then they can get the books transferred to their smartphone even though they don't have a, a data plan mm -hmm. and then they can start to read so we're really trying because they don't have books they don't read they don't have libraries even in Phnom Penh there's not a library mm -hmm. they don't have libraries so uh we we are we were designing it to accommodate the Raspberry Pi with uh, internet in a box. But right now there's not an API that runs with Moodle on the Raspberry Pi when it's separate from a Wi-Fi, uh, but they, they said that might come. So uh, when they use Mathematica, they have to do it in you know rotating groups in the room, or you have to have two different Raspberry Pis for the group. And a Raspberry Pi running internet in a box will accommodate 35 people logging in simultaneously. Uh, but, and you could have the server sitting, you know, the Raspberry Pi that is running in a box there, and you could have students there uh, using Mathematica while everybody else is doing something, uh, you know, accessing documents. And the other thing that's complicated is, you know, right now we're using Moodle mostly as a document server, but it, there's the hope that the teachers, as they become more familiar with um, using it, that they'll start to take advantage of all the other you know, features like tracking students and doing more formative assessment and, and then doing adaptive learning. But we're putting in place the infrastructure uh, which can be used also on the internet. So the, the CWSS website is on the internet and that's sort of a platform where teachers do professional development and they create courses in Kamai. And then those that are downloaded and Moodle's free so if they do have a computer, uh, they could if they could put a version of Moodle on their computer. They can then download the MBZ file from the, the website. So any content that they create is all open source. And then they can put it either on their own computer or they can put it on the Raspberry Pi. But there's so many access limitations across Cambodia that uh, we're designing for the worst case scenario, but it it'll work on the on the Y on the internet. On the internet and why Cambodia well in uh, that's just because uh, in 20 uh, when my son went to college he got to get his PhD in computer science as an undergraduate and then uh, then to get his PhD so I moved into Shanghai China to develop curriculum for the Shei, uh, uh, Shei school district uh, in uh, Minhang uh, district in Shanghai and then I did that and then they recruited me to come to Cambodia to help with uh, um, Science and I was the head of science at the only science museum in in Cambodia, which is in Phnom Penh. It's, it was Kid City, and it closed. And then I started at that point working with the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sports. And Stephen Wolfram had come to Cambodia in 2016 to um, on the invitation of His Excellency Professor Chan Roth. And so at that point, then when I flew back to America, Professor Chan Roth said, "Well, why don't you go and speak to?" Stephen Wolfram in Champagne. So I came to the 2018 uh, C, uh, WTC uh, conference and Stephen Wolfram very kindly agreed to, uh, to uh, approve the MOU. And then we did that. We did the training in 2019 for 500 teachers, thinking that once they had that, a month long training every day, you know, with, for 500, that we that that would be sufficient that they could then self sustain, but it trickled off, and so then we then we reevaluated, and then in 2021, Carol Cronin called me and she said, "Well, what's the status, and what you know, what should we do?" And they suggested then that instead of working at the level of the teacher, we work at the level of the students, that the students would perhaps be more driven than than the educators. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's why then we, switch, we switched into providing access directly to the students. And even though he's been very generous to the licenses, we still, have, we still have licenses we can't give out because it's going to take engagement at the level of the, the villages. 
So it's, you know, it's this upward process. We always have to figure out a way to increase engagement. But next year, the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sports is, it has, has told me that I'm going to be providing a pilot for after school Wolfram STEM, uh, you know, uh, and but they want to start with the elementary school, so grade four, four through seven. And that's why I'm doing the open side ed. So it it was a uh, you know a very circuitous route to get there, and you know, <laughs> and it, it's only just I mean it's a miracle it's all together. But as Excellency Professor Chen Roth and uh, also uh, Stephen Wolfram have been very committed. And we uh, we hope that, or now what I'm trying to do is I sent a message to Professor Chen Roth. I said, Stephen Wolfen said, if we translate 6,000 commands, you can get a version in Khmer, a country, the only country in the world that speaks Khmer. <laughs> it's a language which, of course, is not very well developed because everybody died during the Khmer Rouge. And so you have, you know, all of these variations of this language, right? And uh, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry, please. Maybe the barbed wire for example, yeah. in those two countries or any other country, any third country, what would be these projects over there? Oh, it's so easy. You know, I take a Moodle site. You know, uh, well, you have to have, you have to have uh, a, somebody at the ministry who yeah. will say to the teachers okay everybody we're having a meeting and they all come you know and then he had a cambodian mathematical society meeting okay. and all the math teachers attended because that you know and so that was over a thousand and then uh, we had a series uh, in the slide i didn't say but all the thing in, all the things in yellow were the wolfram presentation so then they participate so the engagement has to be from somebody who is yeah. has a uh sort of a, a um i don't you know some sort of a, I got it. you yeah, know yeah. but yeah i mean it's easy and then and then it's a matter of uh, you know which, what i did i i flooded them with data because i had a different i had uh groups i had a okay faculty coming in then i had third uh, well fourth fifth and sixth graders and 12th graders so i when i did the weekly zoom which i do i still do for three hours a week it's and then I do a separate uh, session for two hours with the PhD students. Of uh, what I do then is I I give them a program, and there's something there for everybody. And I do two different breakout rooms where they're looking at two different parts of the IWL, and then in the main room the faculty people can talk about a subject specific content. So you have to like when you do it, you have to you can't plan for a certain age group or a certain level. You have to do something that seems a bit frenzy and you're giving them a lot of content, but they'll pick what's relevant for them. And then as long as you put it on a Moodle site with the recordings that are created, then you're creating a library as you go, right? And so yours would be in Spanish, but in Spanish, it's so much easier. There's all this mm -hmm. content that's there. Oh, yeah. So for you, it'd be easier, but- no, what, what I'm thinking is your experience is very important. And sometimes to have a meeting with the Minister of Education I wish you can share some, some of that story there it would be actually very important to us. So I'm more than glad to do, you know, I very humbly I'm standing on the shoulders of giants in this conference yeah. using Wolfram Mathematica. And so I'm, I'm yeah. more than glad to help any way I can. Uh, and also, you know, they could uh, he, he, they could have access to the website or any content that we have yeah. sort of showing. I mean, they can just look and see. And anyway, I can help. I'm more glad to. But yeah, I think it is a huge yeah, tool for third world countries or developing countries. And also, you know, now we can say, so what I said was, okay, we're going to translate 6,000 commands. And also now we can start to support with mentoring somebody who wants to have a consulting company. So, you, yeah. you, you know, you're arbitrarily picking somebody. They're, they're not going to be qualified. Yeah. but you have to lift them up and so you start where they are and then the other thing you do is then you um well I'll, I'll stop with that yeah and you have a question sir uh yeah i'm curious about when a student is doing a lesson plan and he tries to solve something let's say it's real simple like long division and he gets the wrong answer does your software tell him it's the wrong answer and then coaches him through till he gets the right answer in other words 
what is what is student benefit from this? I, I don't I don't exactly understand what his what his encounter is. Exactly. So it, they they all have a Wolfram One account, which means that they can use the Wolfram Alpha code in it, and they can get the step by step solution. Half of them don't realize it. I'll say to them, you know, if you use this, you'll never get another homework problem wrong because Stephen Wolfram has embedded all that in there. But they don't, they don't, you know, they don't. Uh, Cambodia has a very, uh, has a direct instruction approach to education and they do a lot of drilling. And so they have, they'll, you know, they may do 30 homework problems in math. They're sitting there, they have sheets of these, right? So they, that's how they approach it. But, uh, so in other words, it's still the old fashioned way in terms of uh, teacher student, but yeah. they but they they can go to their smartphone and look it up in the uh, in the app. Is that, that what you're saying? They could, but they don't. Okay. A lot of them don't even didn't sign up for the Wolfram One account, but uh, they could. But you know what? Uh, at, at some point, they do so many of them they can almost do it as as pass by hand, and they have to show their work on paper. So they can check their answer, but they still have to show all the steps. So I think that, you know, for the students that do well, that it's quicker to just do them all by hand. They're not that complicated. I mean, we're talking grades, four well, through 12. The issue that I'm trying to reach is uh, when I was in school, the problem was you couldn't tell if you made a clerical error or a stupid error. Right. And you had to wait till the, you got your homework paper back and it was graded. And you're kind of telling us, I, I, the way I'm interpreting your, what you're saying is, it's still like that. It's worse. But it's worse. But but they could go to Alpha, and they might be able they might be able to find the correct answer there, where they could enter in the problem. But then they don't get the, any learning experience at all. They're just they're just basically sitting there passively, right? And unless Wolf unless Wolf from Alpha sets out the answer in such a way that it's a it's a tutorial, which maybe that's what they do. They do the Wolf from Alpha does do that. But I mean, you know, in Cambodia, um, none of the most of the teachers don't have a high school degree because in the 70s they, they all were were killed so the te most of the public uh, the public school teachers that are not in the main cities don't have a high school degree and uh the books are are you know maybe from the 50s or 40s and they're you know there's a lot of errors in them and they don't do formative assessment they do direct instruction they're supposed to do one test a month right and the range of abilities in the classroom is quite broad and they don't do differentiation. So it's it's really, you know, but this is huge because if if they have the tool, they can, you know, they can do everything, right? Well, okay, let me give you a, a quick example. I was crowing up there that uh, I have de Mowry's equation figured out correctly. Mm -hmm. Now, the way I did that is I took Bernoulli's equation from Steve and he has a, an approximator that will draw a curve. So Bernoulli's a, an equivalent curve. And then what I did is I kept putzing around with uh, de Mowry's equation until I got the two curves to overlap one another in show. You know what show is? It's a, a function in, in mathematical where you can, you can put two equations or two graphs together and see if they fit. So in other words, that's the way that's the way if I find an ancient equation that I want to work with, I can tell if I'm solving it correctly by comparing it to something that's that that I know is true, which is going to be something in Mathematica. And what you're saying is they're they're not taking advantage of functions like show. You see what I'm saying? If a student yeah, sat no, down and you said and you said this is a, an incomplete version of the Mowry's equation, try and figure out the correct answer and then plot it against uh, what Wolfram says in show, then that would be an experience where they would learn how to solve an equation and they would immediately know if they're doing it right or wrong because they keep trying trial and error. Now, I'm not telling you what to do, but I, what I'm saying is it sounds like you haven't changed a whole lot except that they have alpha with them so they can kind of, they have it as sort of a coach on the side. But I'm saying, I'm just saying that that's my experience that with show, you can really learn how to solve equations, and you know for sure, for God darn sure, if you got it, if you got it right, because the graph should overlap. The same thing with the normal curve. The normal curve does not include the proper definition for the standard deviation in terms of n and p. So the question is, if you use the n and p formula, where do you put it in the standard deviation for the normal curve? 
and then you should get an overlap with the binomial. So I'm, I'm just, I know no, this I is something, this is, this is a yeah. teeny weeny, I'm giving you a teeny weeny example that wouldn't be relevant to, to, you know, it's not globally relevant, but I'm just saying that I, I'm able to, this is something that is enormously effective for me. And, but you're saying it's, it's still, it's still, uh, it's still paper and pencil, but they, but they, they have the real world act, uh, access to something. Like well, that. well, there's two, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm saying two things. That's what the averages in the classroom that are in the villages in the, in Phnom Penh, you know, the ministry's children's go to the $25,000 a year schools or, you know, the big international private schools, right? So it's, it's one of those well, binomial yeah, I, distributions. I guess, uh, the place it is in right now is, is both professors and students are very sort of in an early, early stage when it comes to, to computers, when it comes to yeah. modern technology. Mm -hmm. So what you do is by providing to everyone, uh, if many of them will not be able to use a lot of it at all because but, but you will find those yeah. that yeah. are good enough mm -hmm. and they will be the ones that, that grow and they will not need too much of, of this help because they, they get access to this tool. So by giving it to everyone, yeah. you will find these sort of stars yeah. and they those stars that. will be able yeah. to transfer that to others later on. And that's guess I guess is there. Yes, and, and to your point, we, we, we're now doing, so we, we do the big club, we invite everybody. Now uh, we're going to do an embedded after school STEM club pilot at the ministry uh, model school. And that's going to be, uh, I'm being helped. I'm doing exactly what you're saying, which is more inquiry based and which is more uh, taking content and comparing and going for conceptual understanding and not just wrote. So you know, to your point, no, I agree with you. That's really what we're doing. But in uh, uh, Mr. Um, McNally, John McNally uh, suggested to use the open sci ed. Uh, content, which is great because then we, we don't have to worry about the curriculum. And then we're going to then do it, what you said, which is all these activities. 